Hey there, puzzlers! My name is Fleb, and today I want to show you a beautiful puzzle from Hanayama called the Cast Cubie. The puzzle consists of two pieces, one of which is a cube with several slotted holes in it, and the other is a metal piece in the shape of a wedge. It starts in this position with the cubie under the two eyes, and the object is to take the wedge off of the puzzle. To do that, there's various ways that the wedge can move. At each point, the wedge can move one of three different directions, using one of the flat sides, the other of the flat sides, or straight across, like that. However, due to the fact that there aren't holes everywhere, there are some ways that the wedge can't move, and this creates an interesting puzzle. In some sense, you can think about this puzzle like a maze. You're moving the wedge throughout the cube, and eventually you want to find a way to take it off. And the reason I'm highlighting this puzzle in particular and so it does a good job of highlighting a couple different important techniques for solving maze puzzles. Without further ado, let's get started. One of the most important things to figure out when you're solving this puzzle for the first time is how the wedge is going to come off. If you look around the cube, there's lots of holes, but there's exactly one hole which is a little bit bigger than the rest. It's a little hard to see on the video, but it happens to be just wide enough that it can slide this part right through, as opposed to here, where it's blocked. So our objective is going to be getting here. Now let's talk about a way to get there. One of the most important techniques for maze puzzles is consistent notation. Here's the notation that I came up with for this puzzle. If you look at the top face of the puzzle, I'm labeling that A starting in the upper left-hand corner and proceeding clockwise. I'm numbering all of the holes. So hole A1 is the hole in the upper left. From there, I label the faces B in the back, C on the right, D in front, and E on the left. Note this is a consistent orientation because the two circles on the top face are always in the lower right. Now we can begin to draw out the tree for how the puzzle proceeds. From the start position of the puzzle, two different notes can be reached, D3 and C6. Each of those has their own nodes that only they can reach. Sometimes the path will branch, but it will never branch more than once. And when I've reached an end of one branch of the tree, I give an underline. And so here I decide to follow down the A3 path and see as far as I can take it. The path goes extremely long, and by the end of my second page of notes, I still had not reached the end of that branch. So even though we had a consistent notation, we still can't solve the puzzle. We need another technique. And the technique that we're going to use that will help us get around the problem of the tree getting extremely long is to work from the end. From the end point, the tree looks remarkably more simple. The first note has two branches, one of which immediately ends, and the other goes to node B6, which branches in two as well. From there, it was just a matter of following down the paths, going until I reached a branch, and then switching to the other branch. And after one more branching point, I found a way back to the start that was forced. So looking from the end of the puzzle, there's really not much that separates it from the start. Most of the moves are forced. There's only two branching points. Note that this solves the puzzle because now we can go from the starting position and follow the tree backwards until the piece is off the puzzle. Now that we know the solution, let's see it in action. A3 to C2 to E1 to A6 to D5 to B3 to E6 to A2 to F5 to B4 to E4, to C5, to F3, to B6, to C3, to F5, to A1, to B1, to C6, and off the puzzle. And there you have it. If you're interested in more puzzle content, please subscribe below or follow me on Twitter, at Flip Puzzles. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. And as always, happy puzzling.